So we have system programs. Fine. So how is that system pro program itself is a process, right? So system programs provide a convenient environment for program development and execution. So we know what is program, we know what is system called. Then let us understand the system programs. System programs, what actually it does, it provides the environment. So whatever the program you have, the user has developed now, that has to be executed. So these are one which provides the environment, it provides a platform. Platform for the user to develop a program and then he can execute. He can directly write. Not necessarily that first you have to write in a paper and then you have to uh, type it. You can directly develop a program in the system itself and then you can continue with the execution. So I will go uh, while writing, while providing the environment, what are the minimum things that the, that the system programs have to provide for the user. So these are the system uh, different stages we have. Uh, these are different criteria where the system programs provide the convenient en environment for the user to develop a program and execution. So what are those? The uh, system program has to take care of file manipulation. So while developing the program, you are going to write a program. So you can overwrite, you can manipulate, you can read, you can write, you can do any changes required. Then status information. What is the status information may include? Uh, the details. Uh, how many jobs you have, how many jobs you have completed. Uh, what is the, which address you have stored, which program. Uh, where, we have, say for example, if I have 10 programs, whether you have completed all the 10 or program 1, how many steps you have completed. And program 2, what is the status, all this information has to be maintained. Then file modification, whatever the changes you have done. You can reuse it, right? If you have written some program that you can be, uh, what, what, same program, I want to do some changes. So that can be done. Then program language in support. So which program, whether you go for a high language or a machine language, assembly language, type of that. So because we don't know, or depending on the application. Say for example, in embedded systems, we go for some microcontroller, microprocessor, some assembly language. Sometimes we go for C language, sometimes we go for Java. Based on that, it has to provide. We know based on that, we have different interfaces. Correct? We have compiler, assembler, all that. So we also, uh, system programs also provide program loading and execution. So how is that, uh, the, it will load the program, it will execute the program. What are the necessary software it has to provide? So how is that it provides communication? When I have more than one process or when I want to uh, use the output of one program as input to another. So how is that it will uh, allow to communicate? Then I need, finally without application programs I cannot do anything. Last class we were discussing no application program interface. So that is to be there. Most users view of operating system is defined by a system programs, not the actual system calls. So whatever the user will write the program no, they can view how the operating system is defined. Major role is done by the system program. But what actually the operating system uh, is performing, that user can view it. But in detail, uh, everything is uh, taken care by system program here. Fine, not actually the system calls. Fine, system call will be initiated, but system program will provide the environment. And operating system will may play. So continuation of the system programs. Firstly, we have defined what are the major roles it will play. Now let us see how is it it will perform. So it, as I have already explained, it provides a convenient environment for program development execution. How? Let us understand. Some of them are simply user interfaces to system calls. Others are con considerably more pro complex. Say for example, if you have only one process, then it is easy for the user to interface. Easy for the user to switch over from say user mode to kernel mode, then back to user mode. If I have only one process. If I have more than one process, then little complex it is. So how is that it will manage? Then I have to think about all this. I have to manage file. I have to store program in one, one in one of the file, program to another file, so on. So this will come into picture when I go for a complex operation. So you need to create a file. You can, if once you finish your job, you can delete the file. If you want the same uh, program, uh, you want to modify, copy the same, rename it, do the another program. Once you finish doing, you can print. So print operation you have. You can dump it somewhere, uh, that's what, you can dump it to some secondary, you can have it as a backup. You can dump it to secondary storage so that if it, is be, if it will be useful, you can future, you can uh, uh, retrieve it from the secondary storage. Then what are the, pro you can list it, how many process you have and generally manipulate files and directories. So for finally you can have the different drives here where you can have different files with different directory names. So all these will come under file management. This is one of the most important job that the system program will 
provide the development, the environment for the programmer. Fine. Right? Programmer means the user here. Next, uh, we will be discussing one by one. What are the things? File manipulation. You understood now status information. How is that we will do? Okay, coming to status information here. Some ask the system for in the information. What actually the information the system program provides for the user? User will uh, know the date, time, and amount of available memory. See, I don't know how many, uh, what is the memory space left out in the memory. Based on that, I can have, I can go for the application. Uh, if at all, if you are using some disk, what is that uh, space available? And how many users I have? How is that I will maintain all these resources among these N users? So with the information, then it, the OS will think, uh, oh, these are memory space available, these, uh, this many users, this many programs, I can store it. So others provide detailed performance. So the first step here, uh, it will provide the information regarding date, time, availability of memory, then availability of memory space in the disk, and how many users you have. Second step, it provides the information about the performance. What do you mean by performance here? How best you are, the OS is providing the service to the user. Whether the response is done within one second, two second, the speed of operation, whether it is completing the job without any generation of error, how best, and whether the performance is constant throughout. All these things, performance in terms of speed, find here and logging and debugging information that's what which what time the uh, program process one started what time process two started what time process three started when it is logged in when it is logged out when your completed job all these details if there is any error generation then the OS should be able to debug that it should provide the information to the user so typically these programs format and print the output to the terminal or other output devices not only it is executing it is also uh, Along with these, it is also taking care of input and output device. If I want to give the input, then how it has to process via the input device. If I want to take in between the program, you want to do some print, st print statement you are executing, fine. Then it has to take care of the output device. From terminal, it has to process the data to the printer. Then it has to get, get the result in the form of printout, fine. So how is it? It is handling different input and output device. That is also to be taken care. Some systems implement a registry. What is registry here? Use it to store and retrieve configuration information. Sometimes you will store the data onto the file, or sometimes you will retrieve the data from the file. How is that it is providing configuration? What are the interfaces you come across? So in the beginning we were discussing, no, if I have disks, you are the as in the external world, if I have a printer, if I have a monitor. So how is that it will handle many devices? So uh, how the data is transferred from main memory to the external device or from the buffer to the memory. All these things are to be taken care. All these the status of information will include all that. So which device is uh, utilizing the memory space, what time it has started, what is the CPU slot allotted for each of